this from splaying when I bring my foot down. You can see this point here, when toe goes down and arch goes down, that point slides further past my finger. It moved from here to here. You don't want that. That means the distance between the first metatarsal and, and my first metatarsal and the heel is increasing. This can give you plantar fasciitis, some foot splay, valgus of, of the big toe, bunion formation. What you want to see is anchoring of this position right here. So what does that? Your extensor hallucis longus, which comes off of your fibula and the interosseous membrane. The interosseous membrane is, a, is tissue that gaps between these two, higher up on these two bones, and it comes down and attaches to the distal toe. There's also a small helper that comes off of the calcaneus laterally off of the side here and that's part of that little soft tissue bulging mass that you see here and comes down and attaches to the base of the first uh, proximal phalanx. These two together <coughs> create some extension of the toe. Here is the long extensor, the extensor hallucis longus or the EHL as we call it and here's isolated function of the short extensor. Okay, so short extensor halysis, long extensor. Your patients need to be able to isolate these two. A lot of clients will not be able to do that. They will only be able to get to the long extensor. I want you to watch the function of this tripod if I can only get to my long extensor without getting to my short extensor. You see that distance increasing again. Watch what happens when I can uh, sequentially activate long extensor and short extensor. Long extensor and short extensor pull back into extension, help accentuate the, right, the lift of the arch. It's part of what we call the windless mechanism of Hicks that pulls the foot back to here. It anchors the first tripod. If I now release the long extensor and keep the short extensor, I can now activate my flexors and there's no change in position here. You certainly don't want to get this clawing effect here. You'd like the toe to be able to flatten out a little bit without losing this distance, but for the sake of what we're trying to do here today, I want to show you, activate long and short extensor, keep the short extensor, let the long extensor go, and now go into your flexors, and the tripod didn't move here, as opposed to what I told you before, letting, and it's what I'm trying to show you today, is this short extensor, the extensor hallucis brevis, is critical because without it, our tripod slides again. With it, I can maintain my tripod positioning and I can maintain my arch. You do not want to get them too much into a grip response that you're seeing here with my toes where you're getting this response. But in order to teach the exercise, sometimes we have to move backwards neurologically to get function first and then we will learn how to soften the toes <coughs> without losing the tripod position. So I'm going to kind of go on an angle because of the camera here and show you arches up with both extensors, get into here, drop down and flatten my toes. This is certainly difficult, but you teach anything, you have to learn how to crawl before you have to learn how to walk, before you learn how to run. You slowly teach these patterns and then as they gain skill on each sequential pattern, you'll be able to drop down into flattening the toes out without losing the actual position. Again, using them, dropping down, flat toes, arch does not move. So, what you need to be able to do is test your athletes, can I get to the long extensor with some strength? Can they get to the short extensor with some strength? A lot of clients can't get to this position. It's neurologically unfamiliar to them. They can't even activate that pattern. Um, they will try and get into their long extensor. These are the people that have chronically shortened feet as we're, or, or flat feet as we're seeing. So certainly doesn't fit with everybody. Now, to give this a little side and give you the whole clinical picture, you need to be able to activate some of your other short intrinsic muscles up underneath the arch. And you need to be able to activate some of your um, extrinsic muscles that come off of the tibia that lift the arch. So some of these lift, push up, some of these lift up. Those need to work in combination with these here. Okay, so tib anterior, um, some of the toe, other toe extensors. So you need to be able to use these as a group and hold the arch up. This is difficult. A lot of people don't know, how, a lot of your clients without using some activation techniques and some awareness and neurologic reteaching can't get to these. But to those are the clients that have flat feet and need orthotics to artificially lift the foot. And what we're trying to do is teach you guys how to get out of that and learn how to neurologically reincorporate. Okay? So thanks for, the, thanks for watching our video here. Um, we do have some exercises that help teach this. So if you want to, check out our, our um, D3 
DVDs and we'll show you how to neurologically add some exercises that will help you get to these positions. So again, I'm Dr. Allen. Thanks for your time. We'll see you guys again soon.